Good morning, everybody. Um, I'd also like to thank the CBI for giving me the opportunity to speak this morning. <coughs> my, uh, I'll give the game away with the, the title of my short session. Uh, I stand before you not as an expert in, in the world of apprenticeships, but as someone who's relatively new to this arena. And um, if, if it's okay with you guys, I'd like to just tell you my experience of the last 12 months in, in, in what I found having acquired responsibility for an apprenticeship program, some of the work that we've done, and also some of the things that I think we as stakeholders in the, in the world of apprenticeships <coughs> should be looking to do to carry the message forward about the opportunity it uh, brings for the UK economy. So just to set the scene, uh, Boots Opticians is, is part of the Alliance Boots Group. We're, we're uh, the second biggest chain of opticians in the UK, the third biggest in Europe, uh, and, and that scale followed our um, merger and acquisition uh, of Donald and Aitchison in 2009. So for those of you that wander up and down your local high street, you may notice that the Donald and Aitchison practices are now being rebranded as Boots. Um, so this is a business now that has uh, some 700 practices across the UK, 500 owned by the company and 200 franchised. Um, and, and we operate in, in, in quite an interesting environment. It's, it's got one foot firmly planted in healthcare and one foot firmly planted in retail. So it creates a really interesting dynamic. I also think it's quite appropriate that today when the, the health bill goes back onto the, the floor of the House of Commons, uh, it is quite interesting that I think the, the UK optics industry is probably quite a good blueprint uh, if, if the government were, were to look that way for how healthcare can be delivered uh, to drive up quality um, through, through, through harnessing a market uh, dynamic and uh, you know that, that's kind of the environment in which we operate. I think the, the other thing uh, that I've known really about uh, Boots Opticians is that we're very very proud to have won the uh, 2011 Sunday Times Best Big Company to Work For award this year uh, and what was particularly pleasing around that was having won that at a time when we were going through really quite significant organisational change with the, the merger uh, and, and, and all of the turmoil that that, that can create. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, if only because it, it, it kind of just gives you a, a, a sense of one or two of the insights that I might bring. Uh, I started my life in a, in a dark room testing eyes, and I got a bit bored with that. So I kind of went on to do a number of different things. But I spent most of my career in Boots looking after professional resourcing and development, which was an interesting challenge through the 90s. There were only four parts of the country that were hard to recruit optometrists. That was England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales. <laughs> and, um, so it, it was quite interesting. I, st I started that job with hair and, and rapidly lost it. And, and as part of that, that remit around uh, workforce development, uh, I was asked to pick up responsibility for the, the clinical professional training development. Uh, and and, and I, I, was, I, I absolutely loved doing that work for about 11 years. So, so, and my introduction to apprenticeships came last summer. I was asked to pick up responsibility for a, for a scheme that was, uh, that was already in existence in Donald and Aitchison. And we were looking at how we might map that across the, the broader boots. Um, stable. So we are, <coughs> we are the largest provider of apprenticeships in the UK optics industry and um, the, the, the story really is that the, the background to this program was, was, was really embedded in the culture of Donald and Aitchison. We had a very structured NVQ program which colleagues absolutely loved and I think this is one of the things that we as, as stakeholders in this need to get out there. We can all talk about you know, the, the value and the hard measures that apprenticeships bring but one of the things that I found really inspirational is the the impact that uh, getting a qualification has on people's self-belief and aspiration and belief that they can go on and do other things and I'm not sure we really have a great way of measuring that but these are the stories that I think can inspire people. So I think it's incumbent on all of us to, to kind of carry those messages through. Um, I think some of the things that Donald Nation were really, really strong with was that they were absolutely consistent around whether it was funded or non-funded uh, learners. But, but we did have some, some good KPIs when we looked at the impact that training people had. Um, just to, to keep it really simple, the, the blue line would be a measure of productivity. As we go left to right on the graph, as, as we increase the capability of someone there, their, their productivity went up. The, the red line actually is, is customer service measure. So what our customers told us about their interactions with our people, uh, and it created the evidence that actually, um, not only by training people do we get a more productive workforce, um, but we also make our customers happier. So there's some real added value uh, in, in the kind of hard and soft measures around running an apprenticeship program. We had a few challenges though. Um, <coughs> we had one training centre in Birmingham uh, and it was re running residential courses. Now for any of you that go into an opticians, you'll probably be aware that, that the workforce is predominantly uh, young female and, and often in retailing part time. Uh, residential courses in Birmingham didn't really fit with that work-life balance so we really had to look at how we made the the program more accessible to our, to our colleagues. Um, 
It was also, we, we probably weren't really operating at pace in, in terms of a retail environment. We, we, the, the, the program was, was a bit, uh, was probably a, a bit overly technical if I'm honest, uh, and lacked some of those softer skills which actually really drove the, you know, some of the things around how customers felt about dealing with our colleagues. And we also had a slight problem that just as we, we did the merger, the, um, the awarding organisation exited the, uh, the optics sector. So that was a, a slight, slight uh, fly in the ointment. So, <clears throat> what have we done in the last year? Really, the journey we're on is about really trying to inspire our people to be passionate about our products and our services. Um, it's been a busy year. I, I, I do have to pay um, uh, credit to, to EDI, who are now part of Pearson Learning, and particularly Gary Tovey, who's in the room. They have been absolutely superb partners in helping us develop our new diploma. And, you know, if ever there was a model for how this sector should operate in partnership, uh, the, 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 they absolutely lived that. But what have we done? We've rewritten the syllabus, uh, applied for and secured uh, sign-off from our Sector Skills Council for a diploma in optical retailing. So this is not a traditional apprenticeship that people uh, have in their minds. This is very much about retail. It's a, it's a thriving sector, uh, but it's non-traditional. And these are perhaps the industries that we need to be encouraging to, to, to get on board with, with the apprenticeship arena. We had to re-engineer the program from residential block release to day release. Uh, and we had to create five local uh, satellite training centres, which bizarrely today on the 6th of September, we, uh, we open our fifth, so we now have our full cohort of training centres. Um, I'm not sure it'll go down in history as a similar impact to the day the Mayflower set sail from Britain, but it feels like a big day for us. And um, we, we also had to recruit a team of uh, professionally qualified dispensing opticians uh, to, to, to manage those training centres and deliver the programme for us locally. Uh, we will take probably over 400 uh, level 2 apprentices in the next year, but through the satellite training centres we've created the capacity uh, to train probably around 600 people a year uh, through a level 2 and level 3 programme. And we've retained that uh, commitment to both funded uh, and non-funded learners. And one of the things that we're really trying to do is shift away from just purely technical teaching to more about developing people and really developing those softer skills that really make a difference to our customers and how they describe the experience of dealing with our staff. So a real kind of sh shifting the pendulum away from the overly technical uh, into the more behavioural. Uh, and I'm also delighted to say that um, uh, Boots the Chemist will be entering the apprenticeship arena this year with 20 commercial apprenticeships up at the support office in Nottingham. And uh, I think that's just a fantastic uh, move to get a, an organisation of that size and scale uh, on, on, on the, on the, into the apprenticeship arena. The other thing interesting that, that John alluded to around um, career pathways, quite bizarrely, the guy who's going to run our Bristol Training Centre started life uh, as a train, an, an NVQ trainee at, uh, at London Atchison. So we've got quite a good case study there of, of, of the pupil indeed becoming the teacher. And uh, you know, it just it just kind of reinforces the point that you can create these uh, career pathways. Um, so my insights around the the program are, are really that, that developing people through a formal apprenticeship program has had some hugely positive impact on the business key performance indicators, both hard and soft, both in terms of productivity, but equally importantly, what our customers tell us about the experience and how it feels for them in dealing with our colleagues. The second point about p how our colleagues value the process uh, should not be underestimated and I think we should all reflect on how we tell those stories to inspire other organisations to get on the pitch. The, um, the partnership with an awarding organisation is absolutely critical. I think if, if that relationship is good, that it creates a whole lot of potential about how you can shift and, and, and really keep your, your programme relevant to the, to the needs of a, of a business. Uh, and again, you know, we're all, we'll all be, all be challenged by our finance departments in years to come, and it does no harm to be able to demonstrate that our training development is, is nimble <coughs> and is meeting the needs of the business. Uh, the link to my old role is quite, is quite key. One of the things I learned when I was looking after professional recruitment and resourcing is um, it's no good just focusing on recruiting the new members uh, and new colleagues to your organisation. You've got to keep an eye on the back door and retaining those that you already have. And I think that the one thing I would say in welcoming the report from, um, from Elsis this morning is I think that the, the, not only does it create a platform for us to go out and encourage other businesses to come into the world of apprenticeships, but actually I suspect that as, as, as pressures grow in the coming years, the, the activity in there will also help us retain those businesses in the apprenticeship arena who are already in it, and I think that's equally important. Um, so my plea around this uh, is really that we continue to, to, on the simplification agenda. I think it's incumbent on all of us in the rooms to keep lobbying government, to keep driving 
that, that simplification agenda because it will undoubtedly uh, get more people involved and, 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 grow, and grow that that population. I think it's also incumbent that we work in partnership. It's very encouraging to hear John talk about that and I think uh, we as stakeholders uh, should absolutely work together uh, in, in the future. And we should be quite entrepreneurial about how we do this. Uh, we, we shouldn't be stuck in the, in, in, the, in the traditional industries around apprenticeships. We can really, we've got a model and a framework here that could be quite adaptable. And as I say, we've got to focus on that retention. My, my encouragement to John, uh, for those of you that were in this room back in May when, when the CBI skills report was published, I've written down a few words that John said. He talked about the skills agenda being demand driven, recognise the value of softer skills, the business should drive the skills system, uh, we, he was seeking a sea change reduction in admin, and, and he used the great term of being off your back and on your side. Uh, and I think in, in his uh, response to the report this morning, uh, I have to say I, I believe that he's been true to those principles, uh, and I would just think my encouragement to, to Biz would be to keep pushing that agenda. My request to those of us in the room who are stakeholders in this um, is to see this uh, this report is the, is, is the end of the beginning. John talked about beginnings and endings. I think uh, we, we've, got a, we've got a foothold in, in, in the area that is most critical in, in terms of making apprenticeships more appealing to employers uh, and, and we should only see it as the end of the beginning. I would ask us all in this room uh, not to be advocates for the apprenticeship scheme. The challenge I give you ladies and gentlemen is can we be evangelists? Thank you very much.